So an individual is considered a lymphoma survivor from the time of their diagnosis through the remainder of their lives. Lymphoma survivors face a whole range of challenges, and I think about those challenges as really differing uh, depending upon where the survivor is in the course of their lives. So there's a very acute phase uh, that a survivor has to deal with, and that's the very early phase, when they're first receiving their diagnosis and working with their care providers to make sure that they have an accurate diagnosis and understanding what the treatment plan is going to be. Um, there are a range of other issues besides the medical issues. There are the emotional issues of receiving the diagnosis. There are a number of financial issues potentially. Um, and obviously how the survivor is feeling all of the symptoms that they have. The whole picture changes as a survivor lives through that early phase and, per and completes their course of treatment. And then they have to move on to what some people typically think of as survivorship is when the treatment ends. Although, as I said before, we really think of survivors from the time of diagnosis through the remainder of their lives. In those light, later years, then the, the issues change and we're more concerned about long-term effects. Uh, psychosocial and financial effects can remain a concern and we're also concerned about the long-term health of lymphoma survivors. And they have to uh, understand whether there are long-term implications of the, their disease and the treatment that they received for their disease. For some lymphoma patients, there are increased risks of comorbidities and potentially new malignancies occurring uh, later in life. And so it's really important for lymphoma patients to uh, have cancer care planning and to work with their healthcare, healthcare providers uh, to uh, monitor their health over time. The good news is that researchers are really focusing on this area and there's a lot that has already been learned and a lot that is, I think, going to be learned in the coming years about the comorbidities and survivors' long-term health. There are some diseases that are common and so even if they occur again, it may have nothing to do with the original lymphoma diagnosis or the treatment that the lymphoma survivors received. On the other hand, we do know that there are some risks associated with the treatments or the lymphoma itself. And researchers are getting a lot better at being able to identify those people who have the risks. And that can help shape the long-term screening and follow-up care that survivors need. So some lymphoma survivors, depending upon the type of lymphoma that they had, may be worried about the risk of relapse. But with the introduction of new treatments, and also with a better understanding of who's at most risk for relapse, I think this is a great time of promise for the long-term health of lymphoma survivors. So as lymphoma survivors uh, have more and more years beyond their diagnosis, one of the important questions they face is whether to continue to be seen by their oncologist or whether to be seen by their primary care physician. It's so important for survivors to have the information about the treatments that they received so that whoever is taking care of them really has the full knowledge of what their risks may be and what their previous history uh, of exposures was. There's great hope uh, in terms of the number of survivor clinics, and that's been a real change. There's a great expansion in the number of clinics that are specifically focused on survivors and that have the interdisciplinary medical teams that are necessary in order to provide the good long-term follow-up care for survivors. So the research community is increasingly focused on the long-term health of survivors, and survivors themselves need to be armed with information. Uh, they can get this information through a variety of different settings. Uh, foundations like the Lymphoma Research Foundation have patient education. Uh, you can get education from the National Cancer Institute, the American Cancer Society, and of course from healthcare providers. 